Assalamu alaikum. Today I will be reciting Ayat 184 to Ayat 185 in Surah Baqarah um, when Allah talks about the month of Ramadan. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما مأدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فإدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية تعام مسكين فمن تتوع غير فهو غير له ومن تصوم غير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي ينزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفركان فمن شهد من كم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فإدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكمل العدة ولتكبر الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم آپ سب کو امام حسن کی ولادت مبارک ہو سلوات بن محمد وال محمد اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد وعجل فرجه مرحبا يا حسن مرحبا مرحبا يا حسن مرحبا مرحبا يا حسن مرحبا مرحبا يا حسن مرحبا ميري مولا كيا كهنا ترا مرحبا يا حسن مرحبا سركيا سلحة سيماركا مرحبا يا حسن مرحبا تيغ سي بي جو کوئی نہیں کر سکا کام تو نے وہ نوکے کلم سے کیا واہ سبت رسول خدا مرحبا یا حسن مرحبا اے نبی کے نوازے علی کے پسر تیرے چہرے حسنِ یوسف بھی کہنے لگا مرحبا یا حسن مرحبا یہ حقیقت ہے کوئی کہانی نہیں تیرے اخلاق کا کوئی سانی نہیں مصطفیٰ کا ہے تو آئینہ مرحبا یا مرحبا یا حسن مرحبا جب بھی میں نے تیری فضیلت سوئی آئیں میرے ایمان میں تازگی تو ہی اللہ کا راستہ مرحبا یا حسن مرحبا فرش کیا عرش بھی تیر ٹھو کر میں ہے اور جبریل بھی تیر نو کر میں ہے اللہ اللہ تیرا مرتبہ مرحبا یا حسن مرحبا مرحبا یا حسن مرحبا جب بھی ناسا
Alhamdulillah, we have now come to the half, halfway stage of Ramadan. Today is the 15th of Ramadan and we celebrate today the birth of the Holy Grandson of the Holy Prophet, Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. 15 days, halfway of Ramadan. I hope your fasts are going well. I hope you're making uh, your routine really stand out now. You're really kind of making the most of this incredible month where Allah says that we are his guests. And when we are guests, what does the host do? The host always provides for his guests. And what an incredible host. Sometimes when you go to someone's house and you know their capacity, if they're a really good cook, you know you're going to expect really good food. If they're really good at um, sports, then maybe you might play sports at their house because they'll have lots of kind of games and things like that. And if they are really the creator of you and I, then what kind of host, what capability? The capabilities are endless. So... I urge yourself and myself to try and maximize the, the next 15 days. And as we know, the next 15 days is where it all happens. You have the incredible nights of Qadr, the 19th, the 21st, and the most uh, renowned is the 23rd night, obviously, inshallah. So today we are going to talk about the life uh, we're going to take a, gl uh, a glimpse of the life of Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba alayhi salam. Now, I'm going to start off with when he was born, how his life was in three parts. The first was just as he was born and his life as an infant. Then we're going to look at his life after the death of the Holy Prophet and then his life during the, the time when he was um, only with his father, Imam Ali salam, and then during his imamat, which was after his, the death of Imam Ali. So, when the Prophet heard the, new, the great news that Nabi Fatima salam, his only daughter, was just had just given birth to his first grandson, the narrations report that he runs, he like skips, he's so happy. As he leaves his house, going towards the house of his beloved daughter, Bibi Fatima a.s. And as he gets there, Bibi Fatima a.s. had given Imam Hassan as a baby to his father, Imam Ali. And Imam Ali, she asked Imam Ali, what are you going to name him? Imam Ali said, no, we're going we're gonna to give him to your father, to the Prophet of Islam. And the Prophet will name him. When Imam Ali gives the baby Imam Hassan to the Prophet, 
the Prophet says, the uh, Imam Ali says, what are you going to name this child? And the Prophet at that point receives a wahi. The Prophet said that the name of this beloved child has been chosen by none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And Allah had given the message to Jibrail to say that this child should be called Hassan. And what does Al Hassan mean? Al Hassan means handsome, the most beautiful. And truly, as we will find out, Imam Hassan salam beautifies the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his not only his physical beauty, because they say that the traditions say that the the features of Imam Hassan were like identical to the features of the Prophet. The Prophet, they say, was the most incredibly looking human being on earth at the time. And Imam Hassan also shared the incredible beauty of the Holy Prophet. Now, when after he was born, the Prophet, being the first grandson, was so, so close to Imam Hassan, he actually took Imam Hassan to his house, he would make him sleep on his chest, he would sleep the night with Imam Hassan as a baby, and the connection he had was incredible. When he used to pass the house of Nabi Fatima salam, obviously right next to him in Medina, then say straight away he would be with sometimes with his companions and he'd say, where is the prince of my eyes? Where is my the, 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 the apple of my heart? And straight away, Imam Hassan would, he would be so close to his holy grandfather that he would come running out as a toddler and he'd, you know, jump into the arms of his, of the holy prophet. And the holy prophet would be so proud of him in front of his companions. Now, at the time, during, um, during that era, showing that love to the child, kissing your child, was very much kind of not done amongst the, um, the, the Arabs at the time. You know, it was not a macho thing. It was not like manly to kiss your child. And the Prophet here, remember, whatever the Prophet did, whatever the Prophet done was not something that he done Rather, it was something, it was not through his choice, it was something that Allah had told him to do. That's why we know, and we, we've all heard of Sunnah al Rasul, the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that means whatever the, the Prophet done, however he walked, however he smiled, however he brushed his hair, however he perfumed himself, these were, if we done it in that manner, then we would get the thawab. Because it's Sunnah to Rasul. So the Sunnah, the Prophet was showing all the people, not only his companions, but all the Arabs there, that this is how, this is how you should be compassionate towards your children. And you know, he used to kiss, he used to caress his um, his grandson. He was in love with, with Imam Hassan. It was that stronger bond. Now, once he was with his companions, and he had put Imam Hassan on his back, you know, like a piggyback. So he put him on the um, on his shoulders. And one of his companions said to Imam Hassan, who was only a, a young child at the time, he says, how lucky you are as a rider riding, you know, on the, the back of your, the, the back of the Prophet. And the Prophet at once said, how lucky I am to have a rider like Hassan. You know, Has, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein they were the chiefs, the masters of the doors of paradise. You know, in order for us, inshallah, inshallah, for us to walk through the gates of paradise, we have to be accepted by Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. They were the keepers. So the Prophet, from this early age of Imam Hassan, was trying to show the, the people, the Muslims, the status of this this incredible child so he said no how lucky i am for imam hassan to 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 be on my 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 shoulders and then he says i love very i love hassan the prophet is saying to his companion and he says no 
I love him who loves Hassan. No, Allah loves him who loves Hassan. So if you look at what the Prophet is trying to do, is he's trying to instill amongst his companions and therefore all of the Muslims that true love of his his Ahlul Bayt, of his, of his family. And that started with Imam Hassan السلام, from this early age. Now, later on in the life of Imam Hassan, just a few years later, there was a time when him and Imam Hussein, him and Hussein, they saw a man, and this is a, something, a story that you may have all heard. They saw a man doing wudu, an older man doing wudu. And when he was doing wudu, they saw that he was making maybe a mistake somewhere along the lines of his wudu. So they didn't come to him and say, um, oh, oh, oh man, you're making a mistake. They asked the man, that, would you be kind enough to just check my wudu, our wudu? And then they would do their wudu and the man would observe them doing the wudu and he would see that, oh my God, I'm, I'm doing it wrong. These are the grandchildren of the Holy Prophet. They know how to do the wudu and I made a mistake and how much akhlaq these children have that they don't tell me that I'm doing it wrong. See, the akhlaq that the Ahlul Bayt had was, um, is untouchable. We can only, if we have a, a tiny, tiny bit, bit of the akhlaq of the Ahlul Bayt, see these are teachings for us. If we, can, if we can adopt them in our lives, then this is going to bring about success in this world and in the hereafter. Now, coming back to the, the life of Imam Hassan. You know, there was a time when Imam Hassan had climbed onto the, sh onto the back of, Imam, of the Prophet when he was praying in sajda. He was leading his, his sujood. And at that time, when, when, when he was on the back of, Imam, of the Prophet, the Prophet started to prolong the sajda, the sujood. And at that time, after, straight after that, after the salah, the, the companions came to the Prophet and says, was it that you were, ha were you getting the wahi? You know, the wahi is when the message comes from uh, Allah via uh, Jibra'il alayhi salam um, about a new verse from the Quran, uh, a new verse that has been revealed or, you know, a uh, news that comes to the, to the Prophet. So, Prophet said, replied, no, it wasn't the wahi. He said that it was my grandson Hassan who was on my shoulders. And he was, remember, whatever the Prophet does or says is nothing that is uh, his words. It is a revelation from Allah revealed. So whatever, he, the fact that he was prolonging the sujood, Jibra'il would have told him at that point to prolong the sujood and not to let Imam Hassan come off because it's a sunnah at that time. It's a sunnah. And the, the, again, the, the companions were completely baffled that, wow, this, this grandchild of yours, you are treating him with this much special treatment. He must be a special person. You only give this special treatment for special people. So, years passed and Imam Hassan now saw that his grandfather had passed away. And after his grandfather passed away, he saw this was a time of turbulence. Remember, he was like a prince. When the, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was alive, you know, he was treated like a prince. And after the Prophet passed away, he saw the mistreating of his mother, of his beloved mother, Bibi Fatima a.s. Because as we know, history reports that approximately six, only six months later after the death of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bibi Fatima a.s. passes away. And when she passes away, she was extremely close. Imam Hassan was extremely close to her, his mother, like all children are close to their mothers. And he saw, he saw the trouble that Bibi Fatima was um, given by the so-called Muslims at the time after the passing away of his grandfather. So at this time, 
he was now aware of the, the double standards amongst the, the companions that were very close to his grandfather, who showed you know, respect to him and the Ahlul Bayt whilst he was alive, whilst the Prophet was alive, the Ahlul Bayt, the, the utmost of respect. And the Prophet had said numerous times that you know, with, uh, you, you, it, there is nothing that I want. There is nothing, this is a ayat from the Quran, that um, if, if you want to give me um, some form of recompense, like if you want to reward me for uh, doing any good, if I've done good, the Prophet um, has said in the Quran, that it's revealed in the Quran, then be loving of my Ahlul Bayt. Be close to my Ahlul Bayt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Kulla as'alukum alayhim ajran illa al-muwaddata fil qurba. I do not require any recompense except muwadda, a special love for my Ahlul Bayt. So, Imam Hassan now saw turbulence. He saw difficult times straight after the, the death of his holy grandfather. And now, losing his mother shortly afterwards, he is now brought up for 30 years by his father, Imam Ali And during this time, he sees that even his father is treated really badly, but his father is showing a lot of sabr. A lot of patience. Now, during the time of his father becoming the not khalif, we talk about imamat, but according to history, Imam Ali became the fourth khalif. There were three khalif or representatives, so called representatives of Allah after the Holy Prophet, but we believe that Imam Ali was not a khalif. He was the wasi. He was the next in line after the prophet. After the prophet, and he was the imam. But eventually, he became the fourth fourth caliph. So when he became the fourth caliph, at this time, just before he became the fourth caliph, the third caliph was really troubled. Now he had done some really bad things, and that's why the Muslims got very upset with him. And Imam Hassan. Together with his brother Imam Hussein, were instructed by Imam uh, by Imam Ali, their father, to go and protect the third Khalif, um, stand outside the, the the house so that no one would, you know, come in um, unnecessarily to kind of kill him. Yes, Imam Hassan. Now, one of the one of the things that we we hear about Imam Hussein is that he was an incredible warrior. We all know about Karbala. We Shia, it's in our blood. Karbala is in our blood. Muharram, the 10 days, the day of Ashura, it has been inculcated in our blood that flows in our veins with passion. And we know that Imam Hussein was a warrior together with Hazrat Abbas salam, and they were, you know, they, they fought for truth and justice. And Imam Hassan has in a way been kind of um, made to believe that he was a weaker person because he didn't fight against Muawiyah. See, after the death of his father, Imam Ali, Imam Ali, um, he tried, he tried so hard to get rid of Muawiyah. Muawiyah was the father of Yazid. Muawiyah had taken the, the power in Sham and Sham, had all of Sham had been Syria. This is had been brainwashed. They had been brainwashed to think that Imam Ali was um, not even a, a good Muslim. Imam Ali was um, someone that didn't pray pray Salah. Na'udhu billah. Imam Ali done bad things like drink alcohol. Na'udhu billah. All of this was made um, to um, uh, all the people were made to believe this because every Friday. Friday is the Yom al Jum'ah. So every Friday in Jum'ah Khutbah, the Khutbah is a sermon just before the Salah of Jum'ah, you give a, a speech. And every Friday in Sham, Muawiyah would instruct for the, uh, the Imam who's conducting the Khutbah to say bad things. First thing, you start the Khutbah by cursing Imam Ali, by saying all these bad things, which is 
all made up. It's all lies. And as a result, all the people in Sham thought that Imam Ali was a bad, terrible person. Once from Sham, a man comes. So from Syria, a man comes to Medina. When he comes to Medina, someone points out that this is Hassan al Mujtaba. This is the son of Ali. That Ali that he remembered in the Juma Khutbah was always being cursed, who was a really bad person according to them in Sham. He goes up to him in the marketplace. He goes up to Imam Hassan. As soon as he sees him, he starts cursing him. He starts, na'udhu billah, swearing at him. He starts saying so many bad things, I can't even repeat those things that he said because it is so foul, it is so bad, the things, the words that he said. Imam Hassan is looking at him. He doesn't even frown. He, you know, like sometimes you think, you know, you, you kind of frown your face and you think, why are you, who are you? Why would you say that to me? What have I done? I don't even know who you are. You know, these are the things you might be thinking in your mind. And as a result, your facial expression would change. You'd think, oh my God, you know. Imam Hassan, when this man came to him and started, you know, behaving in this terrible way, he didn't even frown. He looks at him. He lets him continue until he finishes. And then he says, guess what he says? He says, oh man, you look like a stranger in this town. I've never seen you before. Do you have anywhere to rest? You look tired. Come, let's have lunch together. The man is baffled. He's just sworn at the Imam. He's, he's insulted the mother of the Imam. He's insulted the father of the Imam. He said all these bad things and he's stunned. The Imam convinces him to have lunch with him. He sits down with him. He says to him, Oh man, if what you say is true, then may Allah forgive me. Imam Hassan is telling the man, If what you say is true, may Allah forgive me. And if you, what you say is wrong, then may Allah forgive you. Wow! Wow! If what you say is wrong, may Allah forgive you. This is Kareem Ahlul Bayt. This is how the generosity of the Ahlul Bayt is given. And, you know, as soon as he hears this, the man says to him, he says, Wallahi, verily Allah knows where to keep his um, message. Upon whose mind and whose body he wants he, he knows where he should kind of he, who he should choose to to reveal his message his holy message he was so embarrassed and the uh, imam hassan says nothing to be embarrassed about it's not your fault for all of you in sham all of you were brainwashed all of you were were manipulated your minds were were made to believe that we were bad because they were scared of the truth when someone tries to, to hide the truth, the truth never can be taken away. The truth always, always comes up and, and is strength against evil. Always. Never ever think the truth can be hidden. So, this is, this is the character of Imam Hassan. You know, he was, Imam Ali um, said to uh, Muhammad al-Hanafiyah. Muhammad al-Hanafiyah was the brother of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein from another wife, not from Bibi Fatima al-Islam. And in the Battle of Sifin and the Battle of Jamal, you know, he says to them that there was a point in the Battle of Jamal that the arrows were coming in so fiercely, so, they were so sharp and they were so fierce that um, Muhammad al Hanafiya comes back and tells the Imam, this is this is dangerous. It is really tough out there, oh my father. And this is and Imam Hassan, at that time, he's he's, he's rearing to go. In. Do you remember how Imam uh, how Hazrat Abbas on the day of Ashura was like so eager to go and help and fight? And Imam Hussein would tell you, Hazrat Abbas, oh, your time is not there. No, hold back. 
He saw that he was, you know, he had the might, he had the power. But he told you, Hazrat Abbas, to stay put. Like this, Imam Ali had to tell Imam Hassan to stay put. Imamat is in your hands. I don't want to send you into the battle. Imam Hassan saw all those arrows flying. He saw people dropping, right, dying. But he was eager to go and fight. And he says, this is the difference between uh, a son from a, a, a good woman and a, a son from Fatima al-Zahra, salamu alayhi alayha. You know, he was telling uh, Muhammad al-Hanafi, the, the brother of uh, Imam Hassan. Imam Hassan was no weakling. When it came to after the death of the, the Imam of Imam Ali salam, his father, Muawiyah was very troublesome. He was very manipulative, and he knew that Islam at that time was still quite weak. So weak in the sense had lots of uh, Muslims, but all of the Muslims could be bought. What, what do I mean by bought? If you paid the money, then they will denounce their allegiance, denounce their loyalty for the Imam. And that's exactly what Muawiyah done. Muawiyah, Imam Hassan, he was so, so eloquent in his speeches. And he said to the, the Muslims that we must get rid of Muawiyah. Muawiyah is such a bad person. And if we don't get rid of him now, he's going to create, he's going to destroy Islam. And he managed to get so many people to come and uh, gather together to fight against Muawiyah. And Muawiyah eventually got into his flanks, into his um, uh, armies, and he bought all of them out by money, by offering you know, millions of dinars. He managed to, to, to convince the, the chiefs of, of Imam Hassan's army. He had small armies, two to three different armies, ready to go and fight Muawiyah. And Muawiyah went and, and bribed the, the chiefs of, his, of Imam Hassan's army. And eventually they all left him. And he only had 3,000 men which were had to fight almost a hundred thousand of Muawiyah's men, and Imam Hassan even then was ready. Yes, Imam Hassan, like you know, Imam Hussein, seventy-two, two of them were against all of Umar ibn Sa'ad's army in Karbala. The same way, Imam Hassan, he only had three thousand men against more than a hundred thousand of Yazid's men, of uh, Muawiyah's men, and he says, "I'm not scared of anyone." I'll take you. But then even within that 3,000, even within that 3,000, um, Muawiyah had managed to get inside there, pay off a few people, um, start causing mischief within Imam Hassan's people in, in, in his army. And then, in fact, one of them came and stabbed. They say one of the people within his army came and stabbed him. And at that time, Imam stabbed him in, in, the, in the leg, in the thigh. And he was taken and nursed at uh, Mukhtar al Thaqafi. We remember Mukhtar, who was the revenger of the, the perpetrators of Karbala. He went to his house in Kufa at that time, Imam Hassan, and he was nursed over there. But Imam Hassan never ever gave up. He was such an incredible man. And I'm going to end on this one part of, him for, of Imam Hassan that. Um, I feel very passionate about and it, it really softens my heart um, and makes me understand the real generosity of our second holy Imam, Imam Hassan al-Islam. And that is a man came to him. When he was the Khalif, he came to him and he said to him, Oh, my Imam, he goes, I've lost everything. I had money and I lost everything. And save me the dignity Save me the dignity of begging. I want to save my dig dignity. And Imam Hassan says to his uh, treasurer, he says, how much money do we have? This is only Imam Hassan's money. You know, we're not talking about Umar's money. Imam Hassan's money. And his treasurer see, looks into, the, in, into the, the safe and he sees that we only have a couple of thousand dinars left. Imam Hassan was very wealthy. Alhamdulillah, he was very, very wealthy. And he says to his treasurer, he says, give me all of that money. Get it all ready. 
the treasurer looks at the mama and he says, but if you give all of the money, then you will have nothing left. You will have zero money. Imam Hassan says, this person is in need. The person had gone. Imam had prepared that money. Imam told his treasurer to go and give it to him. He didn't give it to him. He wanted, because he wanted to save the embarrassment of Imam Hassan giving. You know, like sometimes you don't want someone to feel bad. He told his servant to go and give it. You know, this is a lesson to learn from the Ahlul Bayt. They were not just generous, they were beyond generous. And in this holy month, we have now passed halfway, the 15th of Ramadan. 15 days, almost 15 days left. The nights of Qadr to come. Allah's generosity is, is vast, it's unlimited. And in this month where Allah says the doors of heaven are open, there is no doubt. There is no doubt that we are going to leave, insha'Allah, yeah, through the barakah of this month, rich. Rich in, in the way that we are going to be cleansed. And if we are, if we are cleansed, you know, to remove one sin, if you, had to pay, if you had to pay to remove one sin on the Day of Judgment, you won't have the money to even remove one sin. But in this month, especially on the nights of Qadr, guaranteed by Allah. Allah says you can leave this, the night of Qadr completely like a newborn baby. No sins. If you are sincerely and you, you observe that night, and that's why it could be the 19th, it could be the 21st, it could be the 23rd, or the odd nights up to the 27th. But really, Allah in His infinite mercy, if He sees that we we beg him, he will give you that status of absolute purity. And therefore, we can be the richest people. But on top of that, if we pay some of our money in charity, it doesn't matter. You know, if someone's, the, like, if your children have got, I mean, you might have 50 pounds or 100 pounds in your bank account, whatever you have, and if you gave five pounds, one pound, five pounds, or ten pounds. Do not think that this is a small amount of money because as a percentage of all the money that you have, this is a huge amount of money. If someone like me has more than that in the account and I give five pounds, it's not the same as your five pounds. Your five pounds is much, much more in the eyes of Allah than my five pounds. Yeah, Of someone who has more money than you. So inshallah, let Allah give us tawfiq to give lots of money, as much money as we can give, so that we get the barakah of that. So many, I'm not going to say 10 times or 100 times, it could be thousands and thousands of times. But Allah guarantees that. He guarantees that anyway when you give charity in any month. He guarantees so many more times reward. But in this month, it's not like any normal month. This month is something special. This is like a, a magnified month. Anything you do is magnified. If you do any thawab, it's going to be, be magnified. You know, it's going to be worth so much more. And you know, we won't see this until we enter the day when we will be in trouble. The day of mahsha, the day of judgment. And that's when Allah will give you, when you don't realize all the things that you have done on these nights, on these special months, that's when he's going to present it to you. Where you think, oh my God, there's no hope for me. And then you'll say, look, this is what you've done on this particular day of Ramadan. The year 2021, the year of COVID. On this particular night of Ramadan, you gave this much charity. On this night, you prayed this. And this. look at this and you think, can't be. All of that, in the, for the, just that one. No, it's not just one. Allah is incredible when it comes to giving. And if we give, we will get even more back. Pray for all of us in these, these remaining uh, 15 days of Ramadan. Let us maximize, we pray to Allah to maxim, for all of us to maximize the, the, the benefits of this, this month and leave this month, inshallah, pure like a newborn baby.
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بر محمد وآل محمد صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم بنك سائل لا يه در پیت مہار یا حسن بنک سا اللہ یہ ہے در پیت مہار یا حسن آج پورے کیجئے ارما ہمار یا حسن بنک سا اللہ یہ ہے در پہ تمہارا یا حسن فاطمہ کے لاکھتے دل مشکل کشا کے نور این فاطمہ کے لاکھتے دل مشکل کشا کے نور این ہو رسول اللہ کے آنکھوں کے تارے یا حسن بنکے سا اللہ یہ ہے در پہ تمہارے یا حسن دستگیر بے کسا حق نے بنایا پیکو دستگیر بے کسا حق نے بنایا پیکو کیوں نہ پھر کوئی مصیبت میں پکار یا حسن بنکے سا اللہ یہ ہے در پہ تمہارا یا حسن مالکے کل نے بنایا ہے تمہیں مختار کل مالکِ کل نے بنایا ہے تمہیں مختار کل آپِ مقلوقِ خدا کے ہو سہارے یا حسن بنگے سا اللہ یہ ہے در پہ تمہارے یا حسن آج پورے کیجئے ارما ہمارا یا حسن اللہم صلی علی محمد وعال محمد